Good evening, and you're very welcome to the latest episode of the Leitrim GA podcast here on FinalWhistle.ie. My name is Brett Neary, and for the next hour or so, we're going to be taking a look back over a number of things, particularly the senior semi-finals yesterday. Of course, St. Mary's, they edged out FINA on penalties. We'll talk about that later on as well. Give us your thoughts. Comment below if you want to uh, have your opinion on that. We can bring your comments into the show later on. Mohol as well. They're into their seventh final in a decade. Uh, fantastic individual performance from Keith Byrne, but a solid team performance got them through uh, against Leitrim Gales in a repeat of last year's final. Six points the gap this year. Uh, uh, last year, three points the gap yesterday afternoon, 210 to 110. We'll be hearing from Eamon O'Hara and Keith Byrne later in the programme. We'll also be chatting to some of the people involved in the Ladies Senior B Championship final this afternoon. An absolute humdinger. Not the best quality of football on show. Uh, mistake ridden performance from both sides. But Glen Carr, or no, that's next week. That's Glen Carr Manor in the A final. Uh, Ballinamore and Kiltubbard served up an absolute cracker of a game. End to end, uh, both teams had do dominated different aspects of the game. Uh, and it really, really came down to at the very, very end. Battling them more inches away from getting a goal that would have won it for them at the end. We'll also take a quick chat with uh, our guest, Martin McHugh, about all things Ochna Sheelan ahead of the intermediate semi finals next week. And we'll also hear from him about um, his own new endeavor, a book, Born to Save. We're going to chat about that later on in the program as well, as well as a little bit of his journey. You'll all know him as GA fans in the county from his time between the sticks for Leitrim in the 90s, which of course resulted in a uh, fantastic Connacht Championship win back in 1984. He was part of that, despite dropping the ball in the back of the net. We have to, I'm a former goalkeeper, I have to get that one in as well, just to get the little bits and pieces in. I'm sure he'll give me a stick about bringing that up in just a couple of moments. But also, it's been a poor weekend for Melvin Gales. They'll be disappointed with how they've team fared this afternoon. They dominated that game in the relegation final against Drummer and uh, six minutes into injury time, a goal from Rory Kelly, the fullback for uh, Drummer Hare, saw them snatch a one point victory against the odds uh, in Drum Shambo. They'll be delighted. They're back in the senior championship next year. But for Melvin Gales, it's time to rebuild and maybe come back in that intermediate championship over the next couple of years. As if it wasn't hard enough to get out of the intermediate championship, Melvin Gales are down there next year. Uh, first of all, let's maybe start with a look back at yesterday's. In, uh, senior Championship semi-finals, and I'll bring Martin McHugh into the conversation at this point. Martin, you're very, very welcome to the program. Good to have you, Brett. Thank you. Well, listen, um, we were spent an hour in each other's company yesterday, and we were with uh, Darren Mulvey on Shannon side for the first game, so you got to see both games up close and personal yesterday. Uh, your thoughts to the two right teams win in the end? Uh, yeah, if you're going to ask that before the game, um, you probably would have said that, but I still think... Um, you know, Fina will probably feel a little, a little bit unlucky that uh, the way the game went for them, uh, level after normal time, level after after extra time and all that, you know, and, you know, the would dreaded penalty shootout. Um, I was even asked today a few times that the way the game should see themselves out. Personally, I say no, because there's nothing wrong with having another day out, you know, which would suit both teams and supporters alike. Uh, Leitrim Gales and Mohol, um Yes, on paper, Mohol uh, were going to win it. Uh, I think if Leitrim Gales had a little bit more belief in themselves, uh, it, they could have caused an upset yesterday. Yeah, maybe let's start with the, the FINA St. Mary's game. And before we get to the conversation about whether penalty should be or shouldn't be part of the of the equation in a championship Saturday like yesterday afternoon, but in terms of the actual performance, FINA came into this, uh, they'd obviously lost their last game against Leitrim Gales in the final round of the of the championship but they were guaranteed a semi-final spot virtually at that stage um they started brightly but it just never really got going they never really managed to get out of second gear yeah um they're, they're, we've seen the first five six minutes they're kicking ball in quickly into the two rocks and it was paying dividend they got a couple of scores within the first six seven minutes and then for some strange reason they stopped doing that you know and uh, then you could say the St. Mary's picked up the drone gear and and Took the game to to Fina, you know what, the ten fifteen minutes into the second half, into the first half themselves, you know. So it was a tight affair that way, and it was up and down um, with the score line a, a few times during the whole game, you know. And did we see a draw coming into it? Um, not midway through the second half, and then you know, Marys were leading by two three points, and then Fina came back and steadied the ship again, and last gap, last gas point in normal time. 
um, seen a uh, the seen it go the extra time as well, you know. And then the injury time as well, very slow in the, in the, for the first period. Not much, not much, uh, there was any score at all. And then Mary's were ahead, and then that last gas point from Fina uh, went to the dreaded, the dreaded penalty shootout. How good was that moment, though, before what transpired a couple of moments later? But to see Oshie McLaughlin step up, and he's he's had a good season. Um, he wouldn't be the first name on people's lips. He wouldn't even be the second name on people's lips when you think of attackers in Fina. But he's been a really, really good um, foil for the two O'Rourke's this season for the club. And you knew the minute it left his boot from his reaction that that was bang over the, the black spot of the, of the of the bars. Yeah, he just got it and, and the pressure was on. They knew, I think they knew it was going to be the last kick of the game. And he got the ball and he does two laps hanging off him and just swung his foot at it. And it just, I do it. Is that high? Do you could say the saying goes, there's snow on it, you know, and it sailed over really high and over the black spot. And there's, you know, the whole stand with. with, with with mad, like you know, so it, it, it's a good, exciting game near the end. Yeah, well, listen, uh, of course, it got even more exciting in the last minutes. Uh, that draw after extra time, of course, nowadays the rules are must be settled on the day. That meant there was going to be penalties to separate the, the two sides. Um, I don't know which to start with first whether we should be taking penalties or whether or the actual penalty showed itself. Maybe let's start there. What's your thoughts on the, the quality of the penalties? I was very impressed with some of the striking because. Traditionally, maybe Gaelic players aren't that good with the ball off their feet. It's not a skill that a lot of people use um, from a dead ball situation off the ground anymore. Well, I think the funny thing is, uh, even, even when we're messing at home, our own club training, some lads are taking penalties you know, before a warm up and all that, you know, just for a bit of messing, you know. Uh, but yes, there's penalties. Uh, both keeper Shane Doonan and Sean Reynolds um, had, I don't think they even caught a ball during the whole game. Like, you know, all they had to do was really kick out, you know. And then both keepers are calling the action too for the penalty shootout. And you got to give credit to the lads taking the penalties. They're absolutely top class penalties. Um, you know, if we, I, I think I said to you yesterday, if this is on TV, you know, they'd be, they'd be top class penalties. And these players we pay, pay, paid millions for the way they took the penalties. Uh, the keepers, um, they were left standing for some penalties and dived the wrong way in the other penalties, you know. So, and then the last, the last kick of the game, you know, it just one, there, there had to be a winner and there had to be a loser. Yeah, I think uh, Sean Ronald stepped up because he did um, fumble one out over the end line at the very end of extra time that probably forced the penalties in the first case. to get feet of that opportunity when it looked like the shot was going wide. And then to step up after that, maybe, because you know this yourself, these little mistakes, the rest of the crowd might not necessarily notice them, but as a goalkeeper, they say, they stay in the back of your head and you kind of got to battle that as much as the actual occasion itself. And to step up and have the, the I suppose, the the calmness to, to pull off that save on the last penalty. It wasn't a great strike, but he did keep it out nice and firm, got down, blocked it, kept it out of the back of the net. Um, and he was the hero on the day. Yeah, people say it was a bad strike or, you know, you made the keeper go the wrong way. The way I answered that, a keeper saves it no matter what way he dies. You know what I mean? Like you could dive one way and it's a bad, it's a bad shot and still, still goes the other side. People say you made the keeper dive the wrong way. You know, it, it's it's really a 50-50. You pick a corner and hope for the best. Um, I have my own technique, but that's that, that's for that's gonna go to grave with me. And uh, you know, and uh, look, uh, John done done well to, to save it. Like no, it was a good penalty, but he done well to save it. You know, but like like, like he says that that incident near the end of the normal game, normal time. He you know he, he went to catch it, but I think he was thinking of the next move before he actually had the ball in his hands, where I have the old rule is, if it's going wide, you let it go wide. Yes. But look, these things, these things happen to goalkeepers. Of course, you played a bit of soccer yourself back in the day. I know you played with Longford Town and a couple of other junior clubs, both in, in Ruski and in Longford and a few other places as well. But have you ever been in a penalty shootout yourself? Have you ever faced that kind of the pressure cauldron that that is? Yeah, I had a few now uh, over, the, over, the, over the years, like, you know... Um, Especially in cup games, you know, the, the the cup games had to finish on a day as well, like you know, and um, finals and all that. You know, you're a hero or a villain, and in soccer goals are a little bit wider than your Gaelic goals, and it's the same distance, eleven yards. And you know, it's all well and good when you're putting a ball down to kick it, you know, but when you're facing a man, God, he's not that far out. So um, you just had to pick a spot and look at his eyes, deep in his eyes, and make him go one, one way, and we dive, dive the other side, you know, but. No, I've faced on a few over the years now. 
it's a good thing you're about six foot four and have a nice big frame there to fill the goals. <laughs> uh, in terms of the second semi final, of course, Small came into it as, as raging hot favourites, despite ne not necessarily having had the best championship season so far. They've got players with experience, with quality. They've beaten Leitrim Gales at the same stage last year by six points. And even though it really only separated the two sides in the last maybe four or five minutes last year, it was tighter again this year. It really was a, a performance that. Maybe not a lot of neutrals were expecting from Leitrim Gales. It was a really, really good performance from them to stay with that Mughal side the whole way through the game. Yeah, you got to give Leitrim Gales credit because they've been really built in the last couple of years. I know we bet them ourselves in the in the intermediate final in, in 2017, and look look where they are now. You know, so they are progressing and they are doing the right work behind the scenes, and it, it's shown. Um, if you want to go to yesterday's game, um, I think if they had a little bit more belief. They really take the game to Mohol. It could have been a tight affair or maybe a shock. Uh, but Mohol, ha Mohol have the experience of being there before, winning county titles, losing them. So, like, you know, sometimes games like that can make you stronger mentally as regarding who you're facing. Uh, if you're saying why it was a game tight, uh, Mohol probably thought that, um, you know, we we're going to win this. And it's very hard to get that in your head and still go up and put in a performance. But all due credit now to, to the Leitrim uh, first 15 and a few subs that came on and they took the game to, to Leitrim Gales the last 10, 15 minutes when it, when it was needed. Yeah, in terms of that performance, of course, uh, Leitrim Gales lost Stephen Goldrick early on. He had managed to score four points at that stage, but they lost him just before half time. And, and probably just in terms of the solidity he was providing um, on the scoreboard uh, was a big loss for the Gales. And, and they probably don't have the same strength and depth that Mohol have. Uh, when you go past maybe 16, 17, 18 on, on the bench. Uh, in terms of the actual performance, though, not one of Mohol's classic games. I think um, we hear from Eamon and Keith later on, but probably not one that they'll be particularly happy with. They'll just be glad to have got through and into the final. Yeah, absolutely. Like they, They'll go back to the drawing board now and they have something to work on now for the game against the Marys. Uh, you know, two town teams playing each other. Uh, so Eamon Hara will sit down with his with, with his management team and the players and talk about Yusuf's games, talk about where they went wrong and all that, and fix all the nitty gritty bits and pieces for uh, before the game. Um, you know, Keith Byrne, people saying that oh, well he had a, a a quiet game, but still the man scored I think a goal and six seven points, like or eight points. So he's still very effective, and he still made some scores on top of that as well. So um, they don't have much to work with. Oh, sorry, they don't have much to do as regarding getting ready for the final, but still they will they will knock it down and, and be prepared. We might have a chat about the final in just a moment, but first of all, let's hear from the two lads in question. First, manager Eamon O'Hara, followed by Keith Brown. Uh, um, happy to be in a county final. Happy with the performance, though? Happy to be in a county final, yeah, absolutely, but the performance was way off. Um, at times, it was very, very good. You know, we started really, really well. Obviously, got the goal at the start, and... You know, by about 12 or 50 minutes, we sort of controlled the game. I think our work rate just dropped completely and just allowed um, Leitrim back into it. And, you know, credit to them, they're a good team. You know, they came here unbeaten. You know, they had ambitions to try and get to a county final. And uh, we knew that. But there was all to talk about, you know, after our performance against Barnamore, that, you know, all of a sudden we go from being, you know, we're not going to win anything one this year uh, to all of a sudden we're being favourites. And I think that sort of snuck into the lads a little bit. Also the preparation coming up to the game, I think the fact that the other game, the first game, the Carrick um, Fina game went to extra time and penalties has sort of just put us off in terms of our timeline. But overall, happy to win the final, but an awful lot of work to do. In terms of that preparation in the immediate build up to the game, obviously you have your plan, your your calendar and your, your diary for the for the couple of hours beforehand in yeah. terms of nutrition and warm ups and stuff. How upsetting is that in the immediate we, 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 I suppose we went to the, we went to, we asked a few people from the, from, from Leitrim County and nobody could give us an answer in terms of if it did come to what time was our game going to be and then you're trying to sort of calculate it out being, you know, two, two ten minute halves, you know, will it be a four or five minutes of a half time break, will it be a two minute break, what the referees want them going to be, so it's, it's guesswork and then ultimately we were told then it was going to be half five and, uh, you know, we just, we tailored it around that, but you try to be, you try to be sort of preparing for the what is, if this goes wrong, if you got a man sent off, you got a black heart, which you did, and this was something that we had talked about was let it not affect us and it didn't for that first 50 minutes, we were good, but we just downed, downed tools and it's, it's, it's a little bit of a habit that has been coming into our game all year that, you know, good starts, getting up a good few scores, few fellas playing well, then all of a sudden the work rate drops and gets a bit sloppy and I think that's something we can definitely correct. 
uh, through the game we saw a bit of a struggle maybe at times to retain possession from kickouts. Mm. Um, is that a worry going into a county final against a midfield like James McGrail and Paul Keeney? Yeah, two good players, but you know you have to look at what what Leitrim had there. The big Morton at midfield, did a lot of big lads around there. Um, so you know, Aidan, Adrian Flynn was 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 doing a man marking job on on uh, Keith Keegan. So you know, at times we struggled, but at the same time, you know, we still broke. E I think we broke even in terms of the contests. I think we were just a little bit disappointed that we didn't retain enough of our own, uh, and it invited it invited a lot of pressure on us, which was kind of. Uh, it's just frustrating, like you know what I mean. It was just we, we go back to our turnovers. You know, I spoke to you in terms of uh, you know the games we played there in the earlier grounds against Fina, against Ballinamore, where our turnovers were killing us. And you know, their turnovers today were a little bit sloppy. And you know, we got punished a few times. And you know, ultimately, it just, just give, didn't give us the foothold like we did in, against the Will and Ballinamore in that second game. So you know, we just have to get back to basics, uh, get our shape right defensively. You know, up front, you know, a few of the lads were brought came in with a, a couple of knocks. So. We'll get them tied it up and hope then that uh, everybody will be ready to go in two weeks' time. Listen, Liam, thanks for chatting to us. Cheers. Best luck in the county final. Thank you, my friend. And, uh, back in the final, another one. Um, happy with the performance today? Yeah, uh, we're happy just once you win. It's, it's semi finals are semi finals. Like, if you're out there and won by 10, 15 points or won by a point, you've won. You're into the final. That's, that's all that matters. Like. Or if you win by penalty shootout, as we saw earlier in the day. Yeah, we were warming up and we heard some more shouts. We didn't know what was going on. But that was, it was distracting. We didn't play till half five. Like we were warming up, and we were stopping, we were starting. So like it wasn't, it wasn't ideal preparation. But thankfully, we kind of got out and got going early. Nice start for yourself. Uh, a goal, early doors for a second, third or fourth. Well, maybe the third minute of the game. Um, but it kind of gets that confidence flowing and, and just going through the motions really in terms of, of kind of getting yourself into the game. Um, Thoughts on, on kind of that good start and how Leitrim Gales got themselves back into it? Yeah, like we had to kind of target a good start because like they're defensive and you've seen that, did numbers back and did numbers back and they're hitting hard. So we kind of were against the breeze, we knew we kind of needed to get a bit of, get a lead, get a goal, get something early to kind of just, so we could take a few scores. Like, and you can see they were kicking scores a lot easier than us. So it was just good to kind of get that bit of momentum. We lost, lost a man for 10 minutes there, like, so that goal was very vital in the end. What's going through your mind when that happens, when the black cards issued so early in the game? Yeah, just, well, not panic, like, just kind of sit back, just management shout on to move someone somewhere, and we just done it, and we coped very well with it. We actually played better with the 14 than we kind of played with the 15 most Should we again. leave Jonathan off every week then? Yeah, we don't know what's going on, <laughs> we're not say that to him. In terms of the, uh, I suppose, the, the, the end of the game, Ronan Kennedy comes on, he brought that little bit of experience, that little bit of guile, just to kind of slow it down, take a score, what a goal from him as well. Great yeah, move. I think he came on and kicked the 1-1 or something, like, he was just... Uh, we kind of said that to him a while back that we were looking at, and like no one wants to be told you're coming on for 20 minutes, but like if you have a player that takes it on the chin like that and says, well, I'm coming on for 20 minutes, I'm going to set up and score, it's huge. Because like, he was a big advantage when he came in there, movement, just pace, getting control in the ball. Like. It's been a good championship for you so far. Uh, some pretty high scores in, in, in nearly every round of the, of the competition so far. Uh, you go to a final now against Carrick. You know them very well. You met them in the league final earlier in the year. You played them in, here in the 2020 championship final. Um, what do you have to do in the next two weeks to be ready for that? We just need to keep working. We need like we set up. We had two losses, which was different for us, and we were kind of told by everyone we were struggling and we weren't going to be there in a county final again this year. So we kind of had to go back to basics and work hard in training and work on new tactics, work on new game plans. So we've worked well over the last four weeks and you can see that in games. We, we've more structure than we did when we lost to Fina and Ballamore. So we need to just keep doing that for two weeks and trying to come in here now and have a good day out again. Listen, the very best luck in two weeks' time. Cheers, Bethany. Uh, Keith Perner and chatting there uh, after the game yesterday himself and Eamon O'Hara. Uh, Martin, your reaction to that? It, they seem both relieved to be in the county final, but also kind of reasonably happy with, with the day's work. Yeah, I think Eamon had a, had a good point there. If they, if they won that game by 15, 20 points, tell them not, nothing to work on for, towards the final. Like, you know, they'd be going into the game, uh, just going through the motions at training. Uh, the way they would have played yesterday, they do have a bit of work to do. Like, you know, uh, work, work harder. Uh, at training and bring that into the game against Mary's, like you know, and uh, I think that he also said that. But um, they were talking about Mohal there a couple of weeks ago, even a few months ago, that they're not going to achieve much this year because they're just going through the motions and nothing, nothing's going to happen. But obviously, they got the house in order and look where they are now in the county final, and and they they'd be looking forward to it. Mary's will really the same. Mary's in their drone, drone, drone field now. Um, uh. Good town team, a good team there as well behind the behind the scenes and all that. You know, good management team, 
So they too will be looking forward to it. So I'm, I think um, all of Leitrim will be looking forward to it, uh, the county final in two weeks' time. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just taking a look here to see St. Mary's last won. Obviously, it's nine years since they last won the title. So uh, they'll be eager to put that to bed. In terms of that game, uh, people still fancy Mohol, I think, from what I've heard anecdotally, at least in the last 24 hours. But can Carrick pull pull it off? Can they win the game? Like, what? what what's the probability in your head? Is it 50-50, 70-30? What's, what's your thoughts on it? The final, yeah, I always put on 50-50. Uh, it all de- depends on who wants it the most, who's going to work the hardest, who's going to do the, the preparation for any, any given thing that's going to happen on, on the final. Uh, it's going to be the Paul Keaveney, uh, Keith Byrne show, uh, who's going to concede less freeze. You know, all these things will be put into play now because I think if Mary's concentrate on you know, uh, nullifying Keith Byrne and his freeze, uh, they'll have a chance. And vice versa, in Mohol, don't give, give away freeze. It's not going to give Paul Keaveney much to do. You know what I mean? So, all these things we put in the play now over the next two two weeks in, in the lead in the final. Uh, who's going to win? If, you know, on paper, Mohol should win. But like you said yourself, there, Mary's haven't won in, in what nine years, so they'd be going into to to retain to um, win back the championship. So yeah. good, a, a good game to look forward to. I think it's going to be tight as well. I think we saw St Mary's last year in the semi final uh, will have been disappointed with how their championship ended. I don't think they're going to let that happen again this year, and I think. Um, I expect that to be a score maximum between the sides. It's going to be a point or two, I think, uh, when it comes down to it. It's going to be real, real tight, and I think it's going to be an absolute cracker. So make sure you either get your tickets or get your streams, and, of course, we'll have live commentary of that game on finalwhistle.ie as well. But meanwhile, next week, and more importantly to you, is the Intermediate Championship. And uh, I know no one's checked your birth cert or your passport lately, Martin, but... uh, you're on the in the squad for Ocknell Sheelan. They face into uh, a semi final next weekend. You've been here before with the club. You've won senior or won intermediate championship in, in 2017. You alluded to it earlier when you beat the Gales in the final. Um, it must be an exciting time to be involved with Ocknell Sheelan. It's been a good year for you. Yeah, so far, like you know, uh, we got to the league final um, in Division Two and Fina Betters, like you know, but it like but. Between injuries and all that, it was nice to get that far. And then we really knocked it down for the for the championship. But we just took one game at a time. Uh, we won the first three games, and then we were uh, had a game against Allen Gales at home, and just our first half performance was disaster. Like you know, we just played like a team we never we, we never trained before. Hang on, up, sorry. <laughs> TV's gone off. That's on the television, and. Um, you know, we really knocked it on after that game and that extra game against um, Barna Cool really helped us, like, you know. So we trained hard the week gone by again and we're looking forward to the game against uh, Kiltobert. Uh, near neighbours, uh, the best last year in the championship. So, you know, next Saturday evening or Saturday afternoon and a half two, uh, it's a game to look forward to. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting time. Obviously, Park... Sean McDermott, uh, uh, Abbott Money Park, Sean McDermott, to give it its official title, will be the venue for the two semi finals next weekend. Yourselves and Kiltobert at 2 30, and Alan Gales and Annie Duff, they meet at 4 30 uh, in Carrick. Um, it's worked out really weird. The two senior teams in the final were not the two who were in the top two spots, they both came through the quarterfinals. Um, this time around, the top two teams play each other. That's another anomaly within the system. Surely they should be seeded, but uh, your thoughts on avoiding the two teams that finish in the top two, or does it really matter who you get? It doesn't matter because Glentobin are, are just as good as uh, Anna Dauphin and, and, and uh, Alan Gales. Like, you know, like, you know, I always say it, it's on the day itself, that our football, you know, a bounce of the ball, referee decision, how our team performs. Like, if we play the way we did against Alan Gales in the first half there a couple of weeks ago, we'd be, we'd be out the door, like, you know what I mean? So, um, Alan Gale, uh, sorry, Kiltober could turn up and be all guns blazing and beat us out the gate, you know. And we, we're hoping to do the same. So, you know, that we both teams will be training behind the scenes, getting ready for the game next Saturday afternoon. Uh, both teams will be willing, really pushing to get to a final. Um, on a personal level, I, I like to get to one more final before I hang up the boats. Uh, but that's 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 for myself only, like you know. But for the team up in Sheelan, we, we really trained hard this year now. I mean, we have a good manager under us, Terence Reynolds, and he really pushed us hard this year. And, you know, in the long runs, it might do eight, nine, ten long runs. I might do six of them, you know what I mean? So I still had to do some, like, you know, myself and Kevin McQueenie. But, um, no, looking forward to the game next Saturday. 
Excellent. Well, listen, it promises to be an exciting uh, time for the club. Of course, lost Connor Cullen to a broken leg earlier in the summer, which a lot of people thought would have affected you. But other than that Alan Gales game, you've been in pretty inspired form all season. Yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, things happen like that. And Connor, he, he just broke his leg playing a game. And, uh, you know, it, it, you know, it, it was um, upsetting. And, and uh, so sort of we thought it might put us off track. But, in fairness, the management team got us right, and you know sometimes uh, stuff like that happens. It, it does make us stronger. We have something to play for now. You know, we we have play for him, Billy Dolan, another man out with a, with a bad injury. Um, young Sam, and he's back from a broken jaw now. If he gets out here, John Wick, he'd be another addition to having a sideline. You know, so sometimes um, stuff like that does drive teams on. Yeah, well, we'll see how that goes, of course, the near neighbours. I, I remember you played Kiltubbert in the Championship. I think it was the tail end of last year uh, in the last round. And I, from memory service, it was a draw. It was a very tight game. You might have won it by a point or lost it by a point. I can't remember uh, specifically. But uh, it's always a tight encounter when both of those teams come. And I know there's a, a healthy rivalry between the two teams. So um, you can expect fairly uh, good banter around uh, Drum Kong and Upmashilin and... Uh, some of the other villages in, in both parishes over the next couple of weeks, or the next couple of days even, should I say. Um, people not talking to each other for two or three weeks after the game, I'd imagine. Uh, but th that brings us, I suppose, nicely to um, to the fact that you're still doing what you're doing on the sideline, 52 years of age, for uh, after a stellar career in goals for both Ockham Sheelan and a couple of other clubs. We, we talk about Glass Gales up in Roscommon and also um, a bit, bit of time in Longford with Clongrish. Uh, but more importantly, is this this is a, a new arrival on the bookshelves of people around the county, but also in bookshops, um, and you can get uh, copies of it. I'm guessing in all good bookshops in the region, uh, if you want them. Is there somewhere online people can order them? I know movies have them on their website, but yeah, online and Eason's and any uh, good bookstores has them. Like you know, so um, yeah, so by the way, it's a good read. <laughs> <laughs> but support support local if you do have the opportunity to pop into one of the shops and, and pick it up or buy it locally online. Um, in terms of the book, I did get a couple of chapters in. I only got it off yesterday. Um, and it's it's got me enthralled already. Um, there's some really interesting stories there about, I suppose, yourself and growing up, but also your early days with Leitrim and, and how that happened for you when it wasn't really something that you'd kind of grown up dreaming and playing for Leitrim. And then all of a sudden, it kind of happened by accident. Um Talk us through those kind of early exchanges with intercounty football and, and what your thought was on, on actually getting through and, and getting into a Leitrim team and, and how much maybe that, I, want, I don't want to say apathy, but the fact that it wasn't a driving thing for you maybe made you perform better. Well, I always, I always wanted to play in goals, um, even uh, in the schoolyard and all that. As I was... Um, we used to play at the break time and it'd be boys against the girls and all that, you know. But when I was playing with the boys, there wasn't much action, you know, for me and goals, you know. So I decided one day I'm going to play with the girls and see more action. And, you know, I think I remember making one of the saves where Tori asked me trousers, you know. So and the teacher was giving out to me, is why they do that? And I said, I didn't want them to score a goal on me. So even the early days, I was very competitive. What made, it be, what made me want to be a goalkeeper? I remember watching the, the the great final of Offaly and um, Kerry, where uh, Derby scored a goal, the last kick of the game for Offaly to win All Ireland. But during that game, uh, Martin Furlong saved a penalty, and that got me the the, the the bite him. He says, "I want to be like him. I want to be a goalkeeper." But not knowing, even at an early age, I want to be with Leitrim. So, don't reach level at club level is playing in goals in you no know, the pitches in those days was are just muck and dirt and one time I made a save and a no real dirty feel like you know the ball came across the goals and just landed and st got stuck in the muck. I made this dive and you know when you dive in the muck you, you continue on for another three, four yards anyway. But I was covered head to toe in pure shite and and uh, you know, I was going home anyway, but daddy didn't put me in the backseat of the car, he tried to drive drive me off the best he could with rushes and put me in the boot of the car, you know, to keep his car clean. But, you know, it, it was, those days it was nice playing goals because I was very competitive. And one club game at home, uh, we're after the game, three or four, four of us were called upon to head for the trials with the county on the 16th the following evening. We were picked up at Moore's uh, post office at the time and be picked up uh, at the time as at Rins bus from Ballinamore and Patsy, Patsy Rin was the driver at the time 
And um, we were picked up and we arrived at Carrick and Shannon. And uh, we had a few trials. Again, not knowing what was ahead of me. It was just trials, a game among ourselves and all that. And then the panel be picked and I was picked. And then it progressed from there. Um, under the under the minors as well. Um, and then um, things weren't going well. We weren't really winning much. And I took a break from that for a while with the, with the club as well. And then I got called up again to be with the, the on the Little Man of 21s when PJ Carroll was the manager. And things were way different then because PJ brought in a different style of training where things had to be done right. Uh, training had to be hard. And either you do it or you go home. And I have said, said to myself, God, this fell into me as business. I was with the Little Man on the 20 pan, on the, sorry, on the 21 panel. In 1990, we got to the final, and I think all were better than that year. Uh, Martin McGowan was in goals that year, and I knew I would be in goals the following year, but I still had to do the hard training. You can't just get number one just because you were there the year before. And the training we done that time now was was pretty severe. But again, you know, it, it, it was the fact that like, um, you just had to knock it down and do the job. You didn't... Uh, get the number one jersey just because you wanted it. You had to work really hard for it. And uh, we played Mayo and we played Galway with that year. We won it on the 2 title. Uh, and with the training we done that year, I took a break. Uh, and we're back to playing club football. And then the 93-94 season, I got called up again uh, under John O'Mahony. And um, as the same goes, the rest is history after that. Yeah, because that, you've actually kind of touched on my next question, which essentially is um, most lads nowadays wouldn't countenance taking a year or two out of the game. The level that it takes to perform at inter-county standard, if you take a year out, you're pretty much retired at that age group. It's very hard to get back to the pace of that game. Very few people do it. We've seen maybe Jack McCaffrey is the only one in, in recent memory who, who's done that, obviously, uh, with Dublin. But like even uh, Emlyn Mulligan went away, but he was still playing – in America for the summer, he didn't just quite, you know what I mean, like t stepping away from the game, you did it twice, once at 18, 19, and once again at, at 21. Um, why? Um, well, from 18 to 21, there wasn't much happening. Uh, there's, it's a big gap. If you're a player with the country minors, you have three years of a gap in if you want to reach on the 21s. But I didn't have the graph for it. I don't know why. Um, I just want to play club football and do my own thing, like, you know, because it wasn't in my head to be ambitious like that, to play with Leitrim. Uh, nowadays, you have young lads talking out, uh, wearing Le Leitrim jerseys and want to play with Leitrim from uh, in their teens. Like, you know, I've just looked my, my own life. I just go with the flow. And when, when after being with PJ Carroll's uh, term for two years, with the 1990s, 1991, there's a lot of hard training done. Like, you know, those days, there's no goalkeeping coaching. Uh, if the lads had run, I'd run too. And I think I ended up being the fittest goalkeeper in Ireland, you know. Uh, so I think that's why I took a year out. And uh, when I got a call back in, in the 93-94 season, I grabbed it both hands. Again, not knowing what was ahead, but there's a sniff in the air something's going to happen because Leitrim uh, in the 92-93 season were progressing well. They won an All-Ireland B Championship and uh, they bet goal for the first time under John and Matney over in Salt Hill. So things were progressing. But I only found out now, only a few years ago, they were missing a link. And the missing link was a proper goalkeeper. And I only heard that, like I said, a couple of years ago, but I didn't know that then. But when I was called in, I was delighted to be called in and worked really, really hard. I mean, training on a John was even tougher than PJ Carroll. Like you're talking about running in Strand Hill, Forest Park and over in Kells. Like, you know, where most where all the players had to meet because he had the Dublin based players and Leeds based players to meet in Kells. And sometimes you might just see four cones around the four corners of the field and no footballs. And the, the, the shit was ran out of us. We ran within an inch of our lives. But we all did it. We all did it. And we never complained. We dare not complain. There's no sore hamstrings or pain in the groin or pain in the back or excuses those days. You either did it or you weren't part of the panel and that's it. Yeah, obviously, um, it is a live show, so we will apologise for the language. If there's a profanity or two, it's, but it's, 
it's it's the situation that we find ourselves in and we're talking about situations. But I think to put it in context as well, we have to put where Leitrim football was at the time. As you mentioned, they won the, the All-Ireland B. I think that was 1990. Mickey Quinn would have been on that team. And they that's the modern Talton Cup. They were competing for Connacht Championships. They were in Division Two of the league. I remember going to, to games uh, against Cork and, and Kildare and, and big, important games in the early 90s. Uh, the crowds were huge. It was... It was a real, real buzz. We've started to see a little bit of that recently with the, the run to Croker in, in 2019 and Terry Highland's first year, and even with Andy this year. We're starting to see that interest in the county team grow again, and maybe this is the acorn that we can grow into something down the line. But from your point of view, for someone who didn't have to grow for it, why would you subject yourself to to, to inter-county training back in the hard days in the 90s when you were getting ran solid all the time? What's what's the attraction? I, I like I said, I think there was something in the air. Um, things were happening because, like I says, with the under twenty one success, the the B success, uh, things are happening. And like I said, with with uh, Leitrim beating Gaul for the first time uh, in over in Salt Hill, like you know, so with a ninety three ninety four season, and we knuckled down. Uh, when the championship draw was made, it, we had to play Roscommon, you had to play Gaul, we had to play Mayo. Those days is the big guns. And we were doing well behind it, like other games and league games and, and challenge games. We were competing against competing against Derry, competing against uh, Armaz. Remember, play, remember playing Cork down in Cork and Cork at Cueve. That was a famous day in regard. We got lost on the way down to the pitch, you know. And uh, I remember we ran out of the field and it was hailstones baiting the legs off me. But we outnumbered the Cork supporters three to one that day. We had a great following, and any games we had. Anywhere in Ireland, I guess any team we ha- we ha- outnumbered as uh, the opposition supporters, and you know the lead up to the to the the, um, the championship itself, like you know we drew we we bet Roscommon the last league game in Carrick and Shannon. We actually relegated Roscommon that year, and you know like the slagging really started where I used to work at the time, like you know. So I think that's what kept me going as well. The whole Goes about around the county, like you know. Yeah, um, let's talk about the the Connacht final in '94. I'm sure you've talked about it at length, but what are your memories of the day? I, I kind of alluded to the first uh, 15 seconds of the match, where we won't talk about it necessarily, but uh, it wasn't your finest hour. But an hour later, you're holding the Nestor Cup, so you didn't really care. Um, your thoughts? Yeah. Um... Leading up to that game, or even you want to talk about their, their Scum and Galway game, we done a lot of work, um, you know, with our heads. Um, every dis- every um, um, situation that's going could happen, uh, we were talked about it. Uh, we trained about trained trained it on the field and all that, you know, put in the action. But we really worked with our heads because the training we did those days is really get us mentally tough. You know, like Leitrim will be nearly there. You know, you bet very few points. And leading to the Connacht final was the exact same thing. We'd done the hard work. We'd done the hard work over our heads as well. Like anything could, could go wrong. Mistakes are going to happen. What do you do? And sure enough, the first 15, 20 seconds, myself and Seamus Quinn, we, Seamus, I called for the ball. Seamus ran across me and the ball went back in the net. Now, any other time, I think uh, the whole lot would fall apart and you'd be better out the gate. But when the ball went in, I caught, got the ball out of the net and I said to Seamus, come on, let's get it going again. Pat on the back. And that was it. It was forgotten about. And my next kick out went out 60 yards. And he had a good game after that and I had a good game. So, you know, it, 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 um, the, the talk we did um, was, um, was um, geared towards that as well. Yeah, of course, Seamus obviously went on to win an All-Star uh, that particular year as well. So he obviously had a decent game. Um before I let you go, because we are kind of tight for time on the show tonight, because we still have to get to the ladies' final later in the program. But in terms of uh, the book, I did, as I said, I get a chance to read uh, probably the first third or quarter of the book last night. And uh, I have one question. You talk about the kind of the all or nothing attitude uh, that Leitrim had at the time, that if one person skipped on a or, or cut a corner or a train and everybody got the punishment. Um, and that can be, it can work both ways. But when the, entire team buy into it 
it really can solidify that kind of character and that kind of camaraderie between the teams. You talked about knowing who the culprit was, uh, but not giving the name out. Uh, are you prepared to give us an exclusive and uh, right. hang one of your teammates? No, I was always getting the blame because I'm, I was only five or seven. Nearly every other player was bigger than me, and I always got the blame because the, the other lads had long legs and the majors had short legs. And I, any time we could cut the corners, I always got the blame. But the funny thing was, I was probably one of the fittest players on the team. Um, it was always myself, Norm Morn, Fergal Reynolds, uh, Pori Kenny. You know, they're the first top four or five players. After that, lads behind us, you know. And that incident, I think, was uh, we were training 118 Kells and there's oh, the snow was coming out of the heavens and all that. Just, there, you couldn't see a blade of grass. And every player made it that night. And the first thing Jono says, it's nice, nights like this, you, you remember, on the Connick final day. You know, so the easiest thing for any player to do when you look out the window, you see snow or it's raining from the heavens and all that. Oh, I won't go training. I, I'll ring up with an excuse. No man had an excuse that year. And we, we started off playing soccer or, or a game of football in the snow. And the game in the yes, there was a few snowballs thrown first. And then we started doing the laps. And uh, John had the four cones cut out. And he says, anybody cut in the corner uh, will be punished. Not just the one player, the whole team would be punished. And sure enough, we'd done the runs and all that. And do, there was a lot of running that night. And um, we were doing a stretch and a bit of a chat and all, and all that. And then John went around all four corners and two of the corners where there was footprints inside the corners. Right, lads? Extra sprints. And the last that picked them blaming me because of me cues, your short legs and your small feet. <laughs> So I know I didn't do it, but the hell with it. I, we did it anyway, so we're, we're, we were going to be punished anyway. So, so, <laughs> there's, good, like there's, a, always, there's always good banter with the belief from that time. Like a good politician, you actually answered the question without actually answering the question. Well, listen, Martin, thanks very much for your company this evening. And it's been a pleasure. Uh, once again, from Hero Books, it's called Born to Save. And anyone wants to grab a copy, you can get it, I suppose, in any of the good bookshops around the county and further afield. But uh, do uh, do a uh, pop in and get yourself a, a, a copy of the book there. Um, it's a great read, very enjoyable. And of course, one of Leitrim's sporting legends, Martin, uh, 52 years of age. You'll be on the bench for Rockness Sheelan. Hopefully, with the best will in the world, you won't be required on Saturday. Uh, and best luck to Rockness Sheelan in the Intermediate Championship semi-finals at the weekend. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Bradfield. Thanks for having me. Martin McHugh there, um, an absolute uh, le- uh, gentleman, uh, joined me for commentary yesterday, uh, but well known to anyone who follows the game across the county. Now, listen, uh, ladies football, of course, this weekend, only the one game took place this weekend, and that was the Senior B Championship semi-final, a final, should I say, uh, between Kiltubbard and Ballinamore, Sean Hessens. Ballinamore, of course, they'll also qualify for the A final. They'll play Glencar Manor next Sunday afternoon in that particular clash. But first up, they had the small matter of the game, the team that they beat by a single, or they lost to a single point a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Ballinamore needed to beat uh, Kiltopper to win the B final. The winners, of course, progressing to the Connacht Intermediate Club Championship, but neither of them too worried about that just yet. All eyes were on the final, and it wasn't to be for Ballinamore. They were beaten by a single goal, um, but an absolute humdinger of a game. Seven goals in total, four 4-9 to Balnamore, 3-13 to Kiltubbard, and it was really all about Michelle Guckian. Um, fine performance from her, but well supported by uh, an able cast of 14 teammates and a few others who came on at different stages through the game. But uh, Kiltubbard, they managed to hold on despite a penalty claim that was uh, waved away by the referee, as well as Laura O'Dowd in injury time, managing to hit not just one post, but two posts, the ball coming back out uh, to a teammate who blazed it over the bar when a goal was potentially on for Ballinamore. But a very exciting game. We had full coverage of it on the, the platform on finalwhistle.ie today. Uh, and uh, well worth checking out if you get a chance to listen back to it over the next couple of days. After the game, I caught up with some very, very happy campers down in Kiltubbard. And that was Sinead Tai, um, Michelle Guckian and Steve Shearer and their managers. Here, here's what they had to say to me. Hi, captain of the Leitrim Senior B Football Champions Kiltubbard for 2022. It's got a nice ring to it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose it's, uh, it's just relief, really, to get across the line um, and, and to get that win. It's, it's fantastic, yeah. Not a great start to the game. Ballinamore had the ball in the back of the net inside about a minute and a half. Um, but you rallied well and you kind of took control, particularly in that maybe last eight to ten minutes just before half time. 
What was going through your mind in the build up to that? Because it looked like it might be Ballinamore's day at that point. Yeah, I look, Ballinamore, they're an absolutely super side. Um, you know, we knew they were going to come at us. They've got some quality players. Um, so, yeah, it was just about next ball. That goal went in and we reacted, responded. Um, you know, we played some really good football in, in the first half. Um, you know, really hit our flow, I felt, um, and, and went into half time in a good place. Um, you know, second half then was absolutely nip and tuck. Um, there was nothing in it and just very glad to get across the line. It, as you said, nip and tuck, there was goals going in galore on both ends of the field. Kind of the momentum seemed to switch from time to time. They had at the start, you came into it, then they grabbed it back, but you managed to hold on at the end despite a couple of late scares. Yeah, definitely. Um, there was some tense moments in, in that last 10 minutes, but um, yeah, there's huge belief in the squad. Um, you know, we were hugely disappointed last weekend. Um, We've been so close to, to getting into that senior A final the last number of years. That's our that's our goal. Um, so you know, to, to get the win today was, was really important. Yeah. It's the first senior championship trophy uh, for Kiltubbridge uh, in maybe six or seven years. So how important is it for this group of players to kind of to, for the older girls in the squad to bring on the new ones and, and kind of show them what it's like to win a championship and give them that little bit of experience and maybe that taste for county final day. Yeah, it's great. It's lovely to get their reward, I suppose, for it. And um, huge amount of work has gone in, not just this year, like I say, the last number of years. Um, you know, and, and the, there's just fantastic girls involved in our team. Um, you know, we're always there, thereabouts. We're never too far away. We're never too easily, um, you know, beaten. So yeah, absolutely pushing it on. It's great, great to get those young girls that taste of, of success, and hopefully they'll drive it on. For someone who said they didn't have a speech prepared, you had a, a, a resounding re reaction to what you said, a couple of words, but emotional in places as well. It's been a tough year for Kiltubbard Ladies Football Club. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I suppose, you know, things happen like that in life that just puts everything into perspective, puts sports in, into perspective. And um, yeah, look, Riona's really special to us. Um, she's an inspiration to us to watch how she's gone about things, not just this year, last year, you know. She's carried herself just incredibly for such a young girl um, and we just wanted to, to make sure that we could be the support to her that she needed um, because, yeah, Marion was, was special to, to all of us, yeah. She even managed to get herself on the score sheet today and that one point may have been the difference in actually winning the title, so nice to see that come around for her as well. Um, in terms of yourself, what's next? Obviously, there's the Connacht Championship, no small matter to deal with in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the plan now. So, yeah, look, we'll enjoy enjoy tonight and, um, yeah, get back at it. We'll, we'll, nobody will be complaining having to go out training next week. Um, you know, it's fantastic, it's exciting. We've had a really good experience with Connacht Championships in the past. So, yeah, look, we'll give it everything and, and see where it goes. Well, listen, congratulations today and the best of luck in Connacht. Great, thank you. Kian, thoughts after that? Ah, look, we made high work of it. I think we were up by seven points at one stage and we came back to a point in it and we were lucky to get across the line. They're a very good team, Ballamore. We knew it would come down to the wire. We knew there'd be only a kick of a ball in, in it. Um, but thankfully, game management, we kept it to it. And yeah, got the win in the end. A few little scares towards the end. Yeah, oh, we like to keep things exciting. <laughs> we like to give the fans their, their money's worth, I suppose, coming into it. So uh, ah, yeah, that's always happens to us. It definitely was. In terms of the, your, the performance, uh, plenty of attention from defenders, two or three of them around you most of the time, but didn't seem to bother you, just shrugged them off and <laughs> were well able to put the ball in the back of the net and over the bar. Oh, look, a bit of luck comes into it too. Look, I had the easy end of the job. I was in the square. It's the girls that work there. The rack sides off the whole way, but down the back of the field. So they brought the ball forward. The balls coming in were brilliant. Like, couldn't couldn't complain. They did all the hard work. I just had to finish it. In terms of uh, help from the posts, obviously you got one goal off a post. Uh, yeah. Laura Dowd a bit unlucky on the other end. Hit both posts and not score. Yeah, ah, look, that's that's football though. It is. It's a game of luck at times. Um, just you have to be in the right place at the right time. I suppose that's the way it goes. And thankfully we got across the line today. And look, Ballamore. They have a great team there. They put it up to Manorhampton again next week, and that, like we were unfortunate last weekend to lose by a point to Manorhampton. We'd love to be in their position, competing in the senior A next week. So they have another, they have another crack at it. We had to get up last week, dust ourselves off, and get ready for today, and that's what we did. How hard was that to pick yourself up after the disappointment of missing out on that final last week? Yeah, like again, unfortunately, we came at the wrong end of the goals last week. They got three goals on us, and we played a great game last week. We just. It just didn't work out for us, unfortunately. Um, but to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off this week, it was tough, but we knew we had to do it. And every player dug deep today, and that's what we wanted. Yeah, people kind of assume sometimes that it's uh, Kiltubber is a one-woman team, but very much a, a team performance today. Uh, some really, really impressive performances from some of the youngsters coming through, and some of the lesser names maybe in terms of profile on the team? 
oh, I don't think there's, there's definitely not a one woman team here in Kiltobert. Like the work rate of everyone you have, the backs coming through, carrying the ball, the strength, the depth we have. We have, we have runners, we have strength, we have height, we have people that can kick a ball, we have it all. So like, it's just to get them, get us working as a team and a unit and that's it clicked today for us and we know our own ability we know we're a good side and to just get that out of it is, is the problem and today thankfully we got across the line Connor Club Championship of course to follow uh, yeah. happy to be playing that oh, level absolutely delighted excited absolutely excited to be playing it um, the longer we stay in the championship the, longer, the better it is for us we're just we're delighted to be here delighted to be playing football and hopefully we keep on going and do well in Connacht so Manor Hamilton won this title two years ago. Um, is it in the back of your minds that there could be a Connacht and maybe even a potential All-Ireland run in, in this team or are you just maybe worrying about today and we'll talk about the rest down the line? Yeah, I suppose you have to take it one day at a time. You have to take it one day at a time. You have to take each team as we get, we get there. Um, but absolutely, 100%, why not kick on? We have to have a little bit of confidence in ourselves and we're well able, we're a great team. We all believe in ourselves, so why not? <laughs> well, listen, Michelle, player of the match and senior B champion has a nice ring to it. Congratulations yeah, today. Cheers. Best luck. Thanks very much, Thank you. Aaron, um, you got to be happy with that. Senior B champions for 2022. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we made hard work of it. We didn't make it easy for ourselves. But look, I think we, we got something at the end of the year and we put in an awful lot of work. So it was nice to, to get a little bit of a reward at the end of it. After the disappointment of last week, kind of just missing out on a place in the A final. Um, how hard was it to pick the girls up for this week or, or were they kind of... It wasn't really. I think they kind of knew they were, there was that little bit of disappointment that they had left it behind. We kind of just we kind of just left them off. We just trained once this week and we knew that they're mentally, they're really, really good and they just reacted. One training session, we did one hour and they just, they showed it there today. They just played really, really well, I thought. A couple of minutes into the game, Ballon Moore had the ball in the back of the net. Thoughts going through your mind at that point? Yeah, that was that was kind of the one moment, all right. It was like, this, this may not be our day, but no, in fairness, they're... They're really strong characters, so they, they put it back on and they, they brought something to the table then after that. In terms of, I suppose, they came back at Achi then through the, 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 the second, second half, the, it looked like they might even clinch at the end. Calls for a penalty looked kind of like it was for us uh, up in the press box looking on, but also, I suppose, that hit, Laura Dowd had a shot that came off both posts. Um, yeah, I, I, I still don't know how that one went. It didn't go in. Um, I, was, I was just behind it there and I was, I was convinced it was in the back of the net, but look, I suppose you get a little bit of luck sometimes you gaze and Sometimes things go against you, sometimes things go for you. They'll be really disappointed, but look, I think, I genuinely think we were the better team across the course of the day, but look, maybe again, that little bit of luck, we, you do need a little bit of luck in Championship Football. Of course, now as well as the Cup going home to Kiltober tonight, you've got the small matter of the Connacht Intermediate Club Championship. Was that something you were even thinking about coming into today? Genuinely, no. No, it was, we had, we had focused on, let's get a performance today. We, were, we knew we were disappointed last week, um, and we wanted to put that right. And I think that was our only motivation coming here today got a cup at the end of it and now we'll we'll celebrate and then we'll, we'll look at Connacht then after that excellent well, well done today Super. thank you so much and uh, that was uh, Steve Sheeran there rounding off our coverage of the ladies senior B championship final today and congratulations to Kiltorbridge and, and just I don't even know what to say to Ballon more. they fought to the very very end but just a couple of calls a couple of uh, decisions didn't go their way maybe on, on the night and they find themselves now uh, beaten in that particular final but they will have the consolation of a senior final senior a final against Glencar manor who are themselves uh, trying to retain their title uh, next weekend that's sunday afternoon in park sean mcdermott uh, in carrick and shannon but just a quick run through all of the results of the weekend we've already talked through some of the games but in the connick gold senior football championship semi-final st mary's kiltahard Fina St. Callians 12 points apiece after extra time. St. Mary's won 5-4 on penalties in that particular game. Sean Reynolds saving the last penalty for Fina. Mohul 2-10, Leitrim Gales 1-10. A Keith Byrne-inspired performance from them as they seal their place in what is a seventh uh, senior final in 10 years. Very, very impressive there. The relegation final played this afternoon. Drum Hare 2-11, Melvin Gales 2-10. A last-minute injury time goal from Rory Kelly. So Drummer Hare survive in the senior grade at Melvin Gales will apply their trade in the intermediate championship next season. In intermediate, of course, the relegation semi-finals took place as well. Balmain Vera 4-7, Drummoyley 2-14, a one-point win for Drummoyley. While Ahavas had plenty to spare, 117 to three points over Mohol in their particular clash. And enough beat Eslin. A bit of a surprise in that one, potentially. At Neighbours, um, Eslin would have been favourites going into that. Uh, comfortably win there. While again, Carry Gallon 3-10, uh, Glenfarren Kilty Clark 2-12 uh, that game a one point victory for 
and Carry Gallon in that they'll be quite happy. But two of the first teams out uh, in the junior championship and uh, plenty of action in that those semi-finals will take place I think in two weeks time those fixtures and um, not set yet as it stands in terms of the fixtures that are set we have some games next weekend the two big ones of course will be the Smith Monumentals Intermediate Football Championship semi-final up in Sheenland versus Kiltubbard that throws in at 2.30 in Park Sean McDermott while well, Alan Gales and Anaduff they will start at 3.30 and on Sunday they got them drywall uh, sorry, actually still on Saturday, the Gotham Drywall Ladies Football Intermediate Championship semi-finals, St. Bridget's and Mohol, they will meet at 11, St. Mary's Kiltard versus from Kieran at 3. Please double-check those times. Um, I'm not quite, they haven't been officially confirmed yet. It's just off the ladies' website uh, uh, at the moment. So they're down for the Saturday, but more likely we'll play Sunday. Sunday the 9th, uh, the Ladies Senior Football Championship, but all roads will lead to Abbott Money Park, Sean McDermott for that one, Blencar Manor versus Ballinamore, Shauna Hessens. They've got a point to prove after today. A good performance. Didn't quite get over the line. They'll hope to do that next week, but I'm sure Manor will have their ideas of how they're going to stop them in that particular task. All those finals taking place in Avon Money Park, Sean McDermott. The Smith Monumentals Intermediate Football Championship, the relegation final, uh, takes place. That's Ballinaglera versus Mohol's second team. That takes place in FINA at 1 o'clock on Sunday, while in the Junior Championship, also a relegation final, Glen Carman and Hamilton will face Melvin Gales. Two teams, the two bottom teams in each group already relegated. That game, of course, takes place in Drumshamble in Shane McGettigan Park. So uh, the structure in junior means that three teams go down this year. Uh, the two bottom sides already relegated, uh, and one of those two teams will go down with them. We'll leave eight teams in that junior championship for next year. That's really it. Thank you to everyone from Martin McHugh, who was so generous with his time to come in and have a chat with us about what was going on in his world with the still involved in the Intermediate Championship, of course, at 52 years of age. His new book, pick it up if you can. It's uh, Martin McHugh, Born to Save, an autobiography. It's from Hero Books, and it's available in all good bookshops. And while I have you, before I let you go, I might as well mention you can still get a copy of uh, our Leitrim Club Championship Guide. It's a really good companion. Uh, profiles on every single player in the county and uh, we'd love if you support what we do by picking up a copy of that. Uh, thanks to our sponsor of all the coverage this weekend, to Gerard Anthony's menswear in Carrick and Shannon. I've been Brefney Early, and I'll be back with you with live commentaries and live coverage of all of the games next weekend and another podcast episode very, very shortly. Thank you to everyone for joining us. We'll be back with you again very, very soon.